Digital Health Trends Why Americans Tend to Self-Diagnose and Self-Medicate From medical institutions to tech corporations, from health startups to investors, everyone in the health field has turned their focus toward digital health during the pandemic. While the number of virtual visits to the doctor's office is decreasing after the lockdowns ended, the field is still going strong, which is confirmed by the fact that the investments in the industry nearly doubled in 2020. With all this excitement, what are the consumer attitudes toward digital health? A new survey of 1,004 American adults carried out in 2022 by digital health company Kilo Health shows several new trends that might shine a new light on health-related consumer behavior online. Americans try health advice they find online. According to the Kilo Health survey, 93% of Americans searched for health information online at least once and a whopping 82% have tried health advice they found online. 74% researched one to five different topics, while 19% looked for more than five topics. In most cases, people were researching around three topics. This shows a steep growth from 2009, when according to the CDC, 61% of people sought health information online. In 2014, Pew Research Center reported that the number of adult internet users researching health information online was 72 percent. As Kasparis Alegnavichis, MD, head of medical affairs at Kilo Health explains, this growth, while natural due to the higher option of technology in general, poses a risk. False information is more likely to be shared on social media sites than accurate news, explains Alegnavichis. If people are trying out health advice they find online at such a high rate, they could be putting their health in danger. A systematic review of 69 studies that analyze the key health misinformation topics and their prevalence shows that misinformation is a huge issue. In some studies, 87% of posts reviewed included false claims. Also, the findings from an MIT research study show that false news stories are 70% more likely to be retweeted. Research from the American Psychological Association scholars confirms that misinformation tends to spread, too. A person who is susceptible to one type of misinformation, for example, about vaccines or cancer, is more likely to trust false information about other topics, too. Naturally, this begs the question, what kind of advice and information do people access, and how does it impact their health? However, there is a silver lining here, too. People are using search engines to get more educated about their symptoms. According to the survey, 65% of people are likely to research their symptoms online before they contact the doctor when they feel unwell. Some patients come to my office with a little background on the issues they have researched themselves, explains Alec Navichis. Usually, they can be more easily educated about their symptoms, their interdependencies, how they occur, and how they compound into syndromes and diseases. However, this still might mean that people might not visit the doctor after they self-diagnose online, or get stressed after checking unreliable information sources and coming to conclusions about their condition's seriousness. Around half don't use all of the digital tools available. The survey also highlights that even though the digital industry grows, the understanding of all the available options for patients lags behind. The researchers asked respondents to define how they interpret the phrase digital health. 56% of individuals link digital health with accessing their physicians via digital technologies including the 7% who said it meant telemedicine or telehealth. However, only 8% think the term defines health apps, 6% see it as websites or web searches, and 14% of people couldn't find a way to describe this term at all. 
it's clear that patients are quite familiar with the telemedicine element of digital health. It's a convenient way to get medical advice straight from the source. However, many people avoid using it because they don't have insurance, says Alec Navichis. The survey shows that 80% of people have tried at least one digital interaction with their doctor. Phone calls are the most popular, 57%. Video calls take second place, 42%. Followed by text messages, 25%. Alec Navichis thinks that digital health is a broader term that includes such preventative care tools as wearables or apps. Still, patients are not using the full range of tools available to them online. Out of all the people surveyed by Kilo Health, 51% say they haven't tried wearable devices, 30% are currently using a device to track their health, 43% have never used any digital health apps, and 35% use at least one at the moment. There are several signs to preventative digital health a person can do, including usable apps or wearable devices. If people don't use other digital health tools apart from web search, they are missing out and might even put their health in danger, explains Alec Navichis. Accenture survey confirms that digital health tool usage has fluctuated over the past few years. Although it was never prevalent in 2018, with more than 33% of individuals using wearable technology, by 2020, the figure had dropped to 18%. According to the same report, the usage of digital health has decreased from 48% in 2018 to 35% in 2020. One in three people distrust mobile solutions. People surveyed by Kilo Health have also shared that even when they tried digital health tools, they decided to stop at some point. 21% used mobile health apps, but decided not to continue. And 19% tried out, but stopped using wearables. Alec Navichis explains several key reasons why this might be the case. The key ones being skepticism about the effectiveness or ease of use. 39% of people don't think the digital health apps will work for them, while 29% don't understand how these apps work. In addition, the Kilo Health data shows that today, 28% don't use digital health apps because they don't trust the apps with their health data. That's a 12.6% increase over the past 17 years because in 2005, only 15.4% of people said they didn't use digital health apps because they didn't trust apps collecting their data. All of these insights show that every stakeholder in digital health has a lot of work to do. We must make traditional telemedicine more accessible, digital apps more convenient, and misinformation online gone, summarizes Alec Navichis. People aren't taking their medications as prescribed. Approximately 66% of all adults in the United States use prescription drugs. A higher percentage of this use is among the elderly, likely having chronic health conditions. The Kilo Health survey shows that approximately 54% of people surveyed don't take their medication as prescribed by their doctor. A primary concern for compliance is the cost of medications. A 2018 GoodRx survey observed one-third of Americans struggle with paying for their medications. Even though many Americans have some sort of insurance, they still find it difficult to afford their medications. Myths and misunderstandings related to medications can also result in non-compliance. After receiving a prescription, physicians may not explain the use of different drugs. Patients may also fail to ask questions, especially if they feel rushed during their appointments. For some, a few months of medication can provide relief from symptoms. This results in many patients stopping their prescriptions ahead of time. Sadly, this causes more harm in the long run. Finally, a cause for non-compliance among many patients is forgetfulness. Among those who were recently diagnosed, 
adding medications to a busy schedule can take some adjustment. For the elderly, with a long list of drugs, it is possible to skip a few if they are not properly allocated for the day. Patients can have many reasons why they skip their prescriptions. Some other causes include inaccessibility, limited understanding, or even cultural beliefs. This means relaying the right information becomes the cornerstone of prescription compliance. Our survey highlights how prescription medication non-compliance is still prevalent among Americans. Several facets explain why the numbers are high without much respite, and all stakeholders included must get involved to solve it, summarizes Alec Navichis. The key problems with self-diagnosis and self-medication. Since 82% of respondents claimed they have tried health advice and treatments they found online, self-diagnosing seems to be a big issue among Americans. It has even become a sort of a meme. No matter your symptoms, if you're Googling them, you will always find yourself having some serious issue, such as cancer, says Alec Navichis. Today, with everything from heart rate to steps being tracked on smart devices, turning to online forums for health advice is easier than booking a doctor's appointment. People who self-diagnosed based on what they read online are likely to self-medicate too, says Alec Navichis. Sometimes this means they skip a much needed doctor's visit altogether. But does online self-diagnosis always have a negative outcome? What are the challenges faced by healthcare professionals when patients do so? How reliable is self-diagnosis? Often the information found online for a particular condition is based on the highest ranking Google search. People are more likely to browse through stories of similar symptoms, which results in formulating a hypothesis on a possible diagnosis. False information is more likely to be shared on websites and forums than accurate news, explains Alec Navichis. If people try out health advice they find online, they could put their health at further risk. This is primarily because there are no one-size-fits-all solutions to symptoms people record. Often, the first indications of possible illness are mild and may be related to something benign. Many factors play into formulating a diagnosis. Some include current lifestyle, age, notable risk factors, and family history. Google does not consider these during a search for a particular symptom. This makes self-diagnosis an unreliable way of medical management. Challenges faced by healthcare professionals. A review of online surveys indicated that 15.49% of people searched for symptoms related to a medical condition. This was before they received a professional medical diagnosis. This review also recorded one third of participants resorting to self-diagnosis over checking in with a doctor. These form a large group of people not receiving the medical attention they probably require. Dr. Google, as often referred to by medical professionals, poses an increasing concern for doctors. Spreading myths and misinformation. One of the main concerns for doctors is the spread of misinformation. The seamless sharing of information through social media and messaging platforms makes this possible. Online forums have made it relatively easy to blow symptoms or even treatment side effects out of proportion. A review of literature that analyzed the spread of health misinformation noted a primary search topic, vaccinations and their side effects. The easy availability of such information has lowered vaccination rates. The main reason is a misinterpretation of possible side effects over life-saving benefits. This not only ostracizes infected populations, but also delays life-saving treatment, escalating anxiety about one's health. Generally, people are now more anxious about their health. Surfing the internet about symptoms one might have heightens this concern. This is frequently termed cyperchondria. 
73% of respondents in a survey conducted among German general practitioners noted internet-related health anxiety as a concern in the practice of medicine. Two-thirds of these practitioners observed patients regularly confronting them with results they have viewed online. This was primarily because it led to confusion about their condition. However, Kasparis Aleknavichis notes, Some patients come to my office with some background on their health concerns. Sometimes it's a good thing. They can be more easily educated about their symptoms, their interdependencies, how they occur, and how they compound into syndromes and diseases. Delays in doctor visits. There is a vast availability of information online. This is why researching the solution online seems like the easiest option for a mild symptom. Kilo Health survey supports this fact. Recording 65% of respondents searching for their symptoms online before contacting a primary healthcare provider. The COVID-19 pandemic added to these delays. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, recorded that approximately 40.9% of survey respondents delayed medical treatment, many of whom required emergency medical care. Their primary concern was related to the pandemic. However, such delays in diagnosis can worsen outcomes. Are there any benefits to self-diagnosis? On a more positive note, accessing medical information online has encouraged people to be more invested in their health. With the rise of telemedicine and smart tracking devices, patients are in the know of how their health is faring overall. Kilo Health's survey supports this in that more than half, 55% of its respondents, recorded searching for healthier nutrition online exercise regimes, 51%, and sleep, 45%, were also among the top few key searches on health. Another study also noted that 72% of participants use health information online to book their doctor's visits. This was because many who researched their symptoms online wanted a more professional understanding of it. They also wanted to know their options and receive advice on how to proceed in case of a specific diagnosis. Online forums can also positively educate on how mild symptoms can sometimes relate to health conditions such as a heart attack or stroke. Would you like to read the full report? Download the report, Digital Health Trends in 2023, How We Seek to Heal Online, and find out the level of knowledge people have about physical and mental health the routines they keep and actions they take to stay well, the sources that provide them advice on health and disease, the barriers that might ruin people's health, the types of technology they use to stay healthy. Visit https colon forward slash forward slash kilo dot health forward slash digital dash health forward slash